Hey, hey JC, long time uh, no see. Uh, how's the knee feeling? And do you plan uh, to play in Baltimore? Uh, knee's feeling good. Uh, we've, we've been on pretty good pace, doing the right thing, taking it and, and ramping up the right way. And we're just going to continue that this week and make sure everything's going the right way. Um, and we'll just continue to progress as the week goes on. So is it kind of a, a game time decision or later later in the week you'll have a better feel for whether you'll play or not? Yeah, we're, we're, I mean, we've, we've been on a good pace so far, but you, you have to continue to monitor it and make sure it's doing uh, everything you want to be able to do. Dan Lobby has our next question. Hey, JC, you obviously put a lot of work in with the NFL and the NFLPA to get these protocols in place. And you know, now we're here at week one. So two questions. First, was there ever a time when you weren't sure if you would get here? And second, have you had any time to reflect and, and take any pride in, in kind of how things have gone so far? Yeah, I mean, obviously, when when we were in a, a full, you know, nationwide lockdown, almost, you're you're a little skeptical if you know what what how this how this thing's going to trend. Um, I think so far it, we've done a really good job. Uh, but something to remember um, is previous successes don't mean anything in the future. And uh, we can do all the right things for these last six weeks, get to this point. Um, but successful, uh, being successful moving forward comes from doing the right things continually. Um, and just because we've done really well for six weeks, that doesn't give us any advantage or, or, or anything moving forward. We have to continue to do all the things we've been doing these last six weeks in order to keep going. Uh, and that's what we've said from the get go. Uh, we felt pretty good about getting started, uh, but you, you have to keep working to, to make sure we can continue the season and get all the way through a full year and, and crowd Super Bowl champion. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Tom Withers, you're up. Good to see you, Mr. President. Hey, um, curious about the, the national anthem protest, the potential for that, JC. Will the NFLPA have any policy in place or, or any recommendations made to the players? Uh, no, uh, I think when, when it happened the first time, we, we made sure to protect our players' rights um, and their right to do you know, what they want and, and voice, voice their opinions and, and have their, their rights protected. Uh, I think the, the main issue for me is making sure we continue to talk about it through the right lens. And, and too often we get talking about who's kneeling, who's not kneeling, and not talking about why they're kneeling. Uh, and, and they're kneeling to bring awareness to social injustice and police brutality. Uh, and too often we, we solely just talk about the action and not why we're doing this thing. And, and now we've gotten to the point and you see a lot of clubs uh, and their players working through kind of action items uh, on how to make the situation better and improve. So I think that's where the conversation uh, should be talking about, not about what, what they're going to do or, or what they did, but more what they're going to do moving forward. Uh, and not just sticking to what their actions were, but what we're going to continue to do to uh, solve and, and help, uh, you know, right these wrongs. Thank you, Tom. Mary Kay Cabot, you're up. Hey, JC, I'm just wondering, um, why is it that, you know, that you work so incredibly hard to try to make sure that you're on the field, you know, for this opener when you just had a scope on August 13th? Uh, we watched you do this in 2018 with the high ankle sprain. What is it about you uh, that makes you want so badly to do this? Yeah, you, you don't want to miss games. You don't want to miss plays. Uh, and you know, myself and Joel both uh, have a, a nice little run going together uh, of being out there for every play since, since we uh, got here together in, in Cleveland. Um, and, and you just want to take advantage of every chance. You, you're not going to play forever. You, you want to make sure you're out there and taking advantage of um, you know, all the chances you get. So a lot of it's a, a pride thing of making sure you're out there and, and available. That's the, you know, the one real statistic you can have as an offensive lineman is availability. Uh, and you always want to be available for your team to help your team win. Is that a, a, a goal for you and Joel to keep that streak going? I, I don't think any of us, uh, I mean, if, if we're, uh, if we're up 30 against a team, I think we'll be okay breaking that streak and, and coming out and resting, but uh, we want to be out there as much as possible. Great. We'll go to Nate Ulrich. Hey, JC. Good to see you. Um, I, I know you're talking about being on a good pace. Um, first of all, what led to that knee surgery for you right before camp started? And then what was it like behind the scenes to get on that good pace? Because I know you were working, but we just obviously we didn't see you. But what was going on for you to, to, to get to this point? Yeah, so it, it, the knee flared up um, early on. And uh, you have to make a, a really tough decision because there's no obvious answer. You can 
you know, sit with it and try to manage it the rest of the year. Um, there's no guarantee that you're able to get it under control um, or you go in and get it fixed, correct the issues, and then kind of rehab as hard as you can to try to get back and not miss any time. Uh, so you know, I, I wrestled over what the right answer would be or, or what the best answer would be. Uh, and in the end, I think, you know, we landed on, on the right answer. Um, you know, b behind the scenes, we've just been working really hard. I give a lot of credit to the training staff. Um, you know, when we, when we made the decision to go in and get it, get it scoped, uh, that was the, the conversation was how, how do I get back in time for the first game? And we put a plan in place and we continue to push through that and, and make sure we're checking all the boxes and we'll continue to do that the rest of the week uh, and make sure everything's working right and, and, and we can continue on moving forward. Tony Grossi, your line's open. Hey, JC, two quick questions. First, to clarify, does this was this scope the result of the knee injury you suffered uh, in December? You were on the injury report the last four weeks with a knee. Uh, I mean, it's tough because it's tough to get into like the medical reasons. I mean, I, again, I, th I think if you walk into that locker room, uh, especially the big guys, probably 70% need a scope of some nature at some point. Um, so it, it's tough to say what was the cause or, or what led to it. That's just the game we play. Uh, and I think you can see it with the statistics about guys needing you know, knee replacement, hip replacement. Like this is a grinding position that takes a lot out of you physically. Uh, so it's tough to pinpoint what the exact cause of, of a surgery like this is. And the other thing is, uh, uh, besides the physical challenge of playing in this game after so little practice for you, the, the challenge of, of fitting into that wide zone at the last minute, and Joe Thomas has always talked about how it requires more of a close knit cohesive footwork, everyone, you know, in concert together to execute it properly. Is, is that going to be a challenge to just drop out of the sky and fit right in the middle of that line at the last minute? I don't think so. I, I think we, we have our techniques. Um, everybody knows what, what footwork, what steps are supposed to take. And then you, you just take the right steps and, and we're all aligned. So I, I, I'm not worried about, about, about that at all. We have Kareem on deck. So we're going to go to Marla and Scott, and then we'll wrap with JC. Uh, yeah, JC, um, Baker was talking earlier about, you know, how he and Miles are trying to drive the change, the culture. I'm just wondering, do you see strides, you know, even what, though you guys haven't really been together that long, do, does it feel different? Do, do you see any difference in the leadership or anything? Uh, yeah, I think, and even Coach Stefanski's done a really good job of building a, a team, a team atmosphere of, of us all getting to know each other and, and buying in and, um, you know, really fighting for, for each other. And that's, that's been pretty clear to see. I think that's been something that's um, been different uh, where we're really starting to get to know each other as, as people and not just teammates. And that was something coach Stefanski has really preached over this, this training camp and the off season. Um, so I think you can, you can feel that. I mean, we're still a young team, uh, still pretty new team uh, coming together, but that, that will continue. But I think we're, uh, we're on a good pace. Uh, just a quick one. Are you still living in the hotel or did you go back to see your wife? <laughs> uh, I've, go, I've gone back to uh, back home. So I'm, I'm, I'm back home now. Uh, last one to Scott Petrick. Hey, JC, Baker's talked about trying to prove that he's a better player than he showed in those first two years. Um, just being around in this camp, I know you weren't in practice a lot, but you're around him. Um, do you see a change in his mindset and approach at all? Well, I mean, Baker's always been a competitor, so that that's always come out of him. I think he's um, he looks great, been super dialed in. Um, now that we're starting to get into game weeks and game plans, now this is one of the, the great communication, the great conversations of kind of di digesting and dissecting the other team e each and every week. Uh, this is you know the, the fun part, uh, and, and this is where all that work comes into play, where you prepare um, all training camp and you go through kind of your normal looks, and now you get week after week a new change. I think. Uh, Baker's done a great job of that in the past, and I think we continue to do that, uh, of just dissecting another defense and, and understanding what they're trying to do to us and getting us in the right spot. Thanks.